El Topo, translated meaning the mole, is a gunslinger who teaches his son of the ways in becoming a man, demonstrating a sense of righteousness when defeating a group of bandits and their colonel when passing through the town they slaughtered. Abandoning his son at a Franciscan mission at the encouragement of Mara, a woman he saved from the oppressive bandits, she challenges El Topo to defeat the four great gunmasters of the desert so he can become the best, earning her respect. In achieving this, she betrays him, her lover shooting him, abandoning him, leading to El Topo being cared for by a community of disabled cave dwellers restricted to the confines of their underground domain. As El Topo redeems himself hopefully in the eyes of God, reborn with a new purpose, to help those unable to help themselves by digging an entrance into their cave so they are freer within a world which can be a cruel place, El Topo's son returns, a monk who holds vengeance in his heart. This is Alejandro Hodorowsky's El Topo, an essential midnight movie classic which became a key foundational piece for the basis of the acid western genre. Hodorowsky's wild unpredictability in storytelling and image conjuring becomes a significant element of El Topo's psychedelic surrealism, meshing numerous theological evocations, philosophical contradictions and sheer untruths together to tell a fable regarding whether one's redemption is enough to be deserving of genuine forgiveness for their past actions. As is the case with any of Hodorowsky's most celebrated works, El Topo was inimitable. Those familiar with the film will undoubtedly have their own favourite images and scenes, either due to its disturbing spectacle or the unexpected spontaneity of the image's existence. The initial shock of the first massacred town we encounter, a bandit who makes out with a high heel, a chapel where a game of Russian roulette becomes proof of God's protection, or bandits who dance with and kiss monks at gunpoint. Hodorowsky crafts surrealist imagery the way we breathe air, as it comes so instinctively to the filmmaker. Roger Ebert commented on this in his review, suggesting it is the most important aspect of El Topo, stating that, I think Hodorowsky's method is not without purpose. What is El Topo seeking in the desert? Why, he is seeking symbols, images, bizarre people and events with which to fill the film. The ceaseless shocking images on the screen are what made El Topo an underground hit in one New York theatre for months in 1970. Not the story, not the performances, not the stars. Hodorowsky himself plays El Topo and the child is his own son. The images. This is true to an extent, as it's the numerous unconventional images El Topo wanders through which often captivates, perplexes, and may possibly even offend us. Within these images, Hodorowsky often infuses his own theological passions, and iconography throughout El Topo is reflective of this. The four gunmasters, like some educators of Tao, the proficiency with a gun an example of their harmony with the universe, if we view the universe all encompassed by the authority of a bullet. The prominence of the Eye of Providence, often associated with conspiratorial theories, originally a symbol of Christianity, to depict the presence of God within Renaissance art, here presented as a corruption of faith within a violent, callous settlement. Even Sufism is hinted at in El Topo's voiceovers, as he begs for the forgiveness of a higher being. Commenting on Hodorowsky's fusion of theologies within his imagery, Lerushka Ivan Zedi wrote for the BBC on how this overwhelming coalescence resonated with audiences. El Topo is a heady, arguably at times unwatchable, brew of Chinese philosophy, Zen Buddhism, astrology, Sufism, European surrealism, the Kabbalah, and above all, the Tarot, a lifelong passion of Hodorowsky, who has written many a treatise on the subject and created his own deck. In its overwhelming melange of baffling allegory, it's fair to say that story or plot is not a priority, and, as with the intuitive meanings of tarot, you have to tune in or drop out. That it became a cult hit in 1971 New York was a question of right time, right place. It's not hard to see its appeal to Lenin and other leading lights of the contemporary counterculture who were looking to the East for new mind-expanding philosophies. With the underground and performance art circuit seeking an introduction to spirituality beyond their horizon, El Topo offered the glimmer which audiences craved. But due to the density of these allegories, many of which only Hodorowsky will only ever truly have the answers to, Lerushka Ivan Zadie suggests we tune in or drop out, a notion that we should either embrace what Hodorowsky offers in his imagery, finding our own meaning within it all, or to allow the images to wash over us as a spontaneous sensorial experience. 
However, this notion may be disappointing for those seeking a literal answer to what El Topo provides. Within a more literal perception, El Topo offers a thematic examination on the nature and limitations of human redemption and forgiveness. It can be interpreted as a betrayal that El Topo abandons his son at a mission to become a monk, as he suggests so himself by saying, destroy me, trust no one. To be separated from one's parent, ignored in favour of a figure of human lust, Mara offers herself to El Topo after he saves her from the bandit colonel, can therefore be viewed as a trauma for the young boy. For Hodorowsky, within his own personal upbringing and his own therapeutic beliefs, trauma is a catalyst towards healing. Hodorowsky has spent decades developing his own unique brand of therapy called psychomagic. Its core belief is that the performance of key traumatic moments can heal one's psychological wounds. If we consider the influence of psychomagic over the story of El Topo, then the trauma of El Topo's son, Iho, is interconnected to his healing and eventual reconnection with his father. Intrinsically linked within the theme of redemption is the interconnectivity of all things. Peter Bradshaw in his review of El Topo outlines this concisely, stating that, what does it all mean? In so much as it means anything, it is about that circular spiralling journey that El Topo said he would have to take through the desert to find all four of the gunmen he would need to conquer. In his end is his beginning and his son's beginning. Like the spiral direction to find each of the four gunmasters, or how in El Topo's death, Iho seems to carry on that old life of his father. El Topo's existence and his son's vengeance are linked, as if the two were always destined to meet again. El Topo's demeanour as a changed man after his betrayal, being left for dead only to recover and find God, is met with scepticism from his son, who now, beyond his role of monkhood, has taken on the role of the righteously flawed soul gunman dressed in black, just like his father once was. Both figures of impaired morality and righteousness, capable of their own mistakes. While it is solely for Iho to decide whether he can forgive his father or not, Hodorowsky's film suggests this dynamic highlights the disconnect between morality, unable to consider self-improvement, and how the figure of change, a force for the better than his old days, is still unable to undo the damage of his past actions. Therefore, this fascinating personal conflict at play between El Topo and Iho unfolds where El Topo must prove he would undo his past actions if he could, and where Iho must prove he is finally healed after experiencing the trauma of abandonment, as if reinforcing Hodorowsky's own theory of psychomagic. It's difficult to discuss El Topo without confronting Alejandro Hodorowsky's own problematic statement regarding a scene of sexual assault between El Topo and his lover Mara, in which Hodorowsky claimed the action was real. In an unexpected way, this discussion also indirectly reinforces El Topo's focus on the extent one's past actions can or can't be forgiven. Art Forum wrote about this controversy, in which they address the disturbing statement from Alejandro Hodorowsky, as well as his more recent apology and clarification. The act of sexual violence allegedly happened while filming a scene for the surreal western El Topo. In the 1972 book, El Topo, a book of the film, Hodorowsky said, I really her, and she screamed. Hodorowsky came forward to explain his decades-old statement, which he claims were part of a publicity stunt. He said, these words, I've my actress, was said 50 years ago by El Topo, a bandit dressed in black leather that nobody knew. They were words, not facts, surrealist publicity in order to enter the world of cinema from a position of obscurity. I do not condone the act of but exploited the shock value of the statement at the time, following years in the panic movement and other iterations of harnessing shock to motivate energetic release. I acknowledge that this statement is problematic in that it presents fictional violence against a woman as a tool for exposure, and now, 50 years later, I regret that this is being read as truth. My practice is centred on healing and love. I invite further dialogue in the spirit of progress. The original statement from Hodorowsky's book on El Topo is understandably distressing. The instant evocation of sexual assault becoming a source of trauma for many survivors, and the notion of it should not be taken lightly. When Alejandro Hodorowsky mentions the panic movement within his statement, he is referring to a surrealist movement he participated in within the 1960s, where performances were intended to offend, to challenge the rising popularity of surrealism at the time. One allegedly four-hour performance included the slaughter of geese, naked bodies covered in honey, a giant vagina, and a crucified chicken. 
While the details may be rumours passed between source after source, there is the possibility that Alejandro Jodorowsky's troubling statement regarding El Topo is an extension of the panic movement ethos to offend the mainstreaming of surrealism. However, people cannot be blamed for finding Hodorowsky's statement suspicious or offensive, viewing the filmmaker and his creation with an air of disdain. Hodorowsky, like El Topo, the character he plays, remains under the question of whether the commitment of a past action can ever be forgiven. In conclusion, Alejandro Hodorowsky's El Topo remains an important piece of the acid western subgenre and an influential example of surrealist filmmaking. While many of its theological ideas can create an intentionally overwhelming experience, the film's curiosity for the unexpected often makes the sensorial journey a captivating, potentially exciting one. Hodorowsky's ignorant statement understandably sours the viewing experience, and continued suspicions still arise regarding whether Hodorowsky was lying or telling the truth, which is bound to make El Topo inherently unwatchable for many angered or upset by the notion of using sexual violence as a promotional tool, which unintentionally reinforces the film's theme on the limitations of redemption. Ultimately, the forgiveness of a filmmaker is not a given right, and like El Topo's need to prove himself a change man to his son, unable to undo his past actions, Hodorowsky remains in an unusual position where his life has come to imitate his art. A special thank you to my incredible tier patron supporter Gil, and my super tier patron supporters Constantin Bombelli, Jamie and Milkway.